lot of the projections in here or the numbers, 2027, sort of everything kind of comes to that year. Right. Is, when you think about this, is that, a, is that a key moment, 2027, four, three, four years from now? No, I think for, for our base business, we set out a strategy in 2018 to double earnings and cash flow, and uh, our target is to basically make that happen by 2027. So the 2027 time frame is very important with respect to our established businesses, and frankly, we're on track to deliver it. We've basically cut $9 billion of structural cost. And you're going to We've, continue to cut costs. We're going to continue five more billion, uh, six more billion, so we'll get to $15 billion by 2027. Right. Clear line of sight to make that happen. We're doing it at the same time we're improving performance, better reliability, better safety. Um, we're growing earnings. Uh, we've captured $10 billion of increased earnings potential from 2019. We've got another 14 of earnings in cash flow. Uh, so a lot of, I think, uh, positive momentum there. The low carbon solutions business, you know, the time it will take to get these, first of all, get the policy in place. So the IRA still has not been translated into specific regulations. And before we can invest the money that we're talking about, uh, we've got to see that, regu that leg legislation get translated yep. into effective regulation. So we're waiting, we're working with the administration to help them understand what, what's required. So a lot of the discussion we had yesterday with our investors is while we have a line of sight to some profitable opportunities, there are more things that have to happen. The regulations have to be put in place. We've got to get permitting for the wells. There's a number of things that have to get finished to make sure that those investments are going to generate the returns. And right. we are pacing the development of those investments to make sure that we've got certainty around that so that we get the returns we're talking about. And what I would tell you, frankly, we're looking at it is we're going to minimize any downside here yeah. and create a lot of potential for upside. And, and then society will determine just how quickly that manifests but, And if the regulations are right. But it does occur to me, I and mean, we have a presidential election less than a year away, if Donald Trump wins, you could imagine a scenario under which he undoes undoes all of those. That'll be, that's, you know, that's a decision that the voters have to make and that our country have to decide on. Our position, if you look at what we're doing and the time it's taking us to roll this out, there's very little money committed in the scheme of what we're trying to do uh, through that election decision. And so, uh, my, like I said... So ultimately, it wouldn't be that big a financial risk to you should we, all of this get undone. You might not want that to be the case, I don't though. Think, I don't think it would be good for society. I think we need, the world needs to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, we think we can make a significant contri contribution in that space. There are things that have to happen to support a business like us doing that, along with a lot of other businesses around the world. This on-again, off-again approach, these extreme positions, it's not good for, for the world, for society, for our country, or for business. And so, no, I don't want to see that happen. I want to see consistent policy, thoughtful policy, that strikes the right balance between reducing emissions and continuing to meet the needs of society, not disadvantaging any group of people, not, not uh, crashing economies, and there's ways for us to do that. I think if we have a more uh, informed and thoughtful dialogue, we can make progress on both of these fronts. It's the discussion you and I had. It is an and equation. We're yep. trying to demonstrate it can happen. We can make money, generate returns, and reduce emissions. Understood.